So I've had the privilege of testing out Pivot's full suspension XC race bike, the Mach 4 SL, over the last few months, taking it on trail rides, bike packing trips, and in this video, we're gonna dive into the updated rig specs, some sizing considerations, pedaling performance, and how it rides loaded down. Let's do it. Pivot launched the latest version of the Mach 4 SL last May, and while the new and previous version look pretty similar, there are a few differences. So Pivot claims that they cut weight by 280 grams thanks to their continued evolution of their hollow core carbon fiber construction and improved DW link suspension. They also made their Mach 4 SL more versatile. Uh, the bike now comes in two versions, a World Cup race rocket uh, built around 95 or 103 millimeters of rear travel, which is easily adjusted via a flip chip on the rocker link, which also comes with a 100 millimeter fork and their trail build uh, built around 106 or 115 millimeters of rear travel with a 120 millimeter fork. The trail version is well made to up the fun level uh, while still maintaining that quick nature of the World Cup version. And the trail version was the version I tested and I kept it at 115 millimeters of rear travel throughout my whole test period. So while Pivot now offers that trail build, which effectively slackens the head tube angle to 66 0.7 degrees, it still is the same World Cup focus frame, which was evident during my test period. All right, so before we get any further, I just wanna take a quick moment to let everybody know that this video is supported in part by Old Man Mountain. Dealing with a jostling and swaying load can be a headache, but Old Man Mountain racks have you covered, keeping your gear snug and secure, allowing you to concentrate on the trail instead of consistently adjusting a wiggling load behind you. These racks are designed for both small and heavy loads, offering incredible versatility that fits nearly any bike thanks to their fit kits. So if you're in the search for more storage options, Old Man Mountain has a solution for you. So check out the range of Old Man Mountain racks by clicking on the card in the top right corner, or you can also follow the link in the description below. All right, so I'm 5'9 and a half or 176.5 centimeters with a plus two centimeter ape index. So my arm span is longer than my height. I fall right in the middle of Pivot's size chart for a medium bike. Uh, and while the decision to pick the medium kind of seemed logical, after I quickly peeked at the geometry chart, I was a bit torn on sizing, specifically with the shorter 437 millimeter reach. My wheelhouse is usually in the 450, 460 millimeter reach range on a full suspension bike. Still, I trusted the engineers and the recommendations, so Pivot ended up sending a medium. And after pedaling it, it was clear that this bike is indeed a rocket ship. One of the fastest, if not the fastest full suspension bikes I have pedaled. But when I pointed it down on my first descent, I was like, whoa, this is strange. Uh, I was like, what's going on here? I instantly felt way too far forward. My forearms and wrists had so much pressure uh, moving forward that I basically felt like I was gonna go over the bars. But I felt like I had to reset my expectations. After all, I was on a race first bike and the position of these bikes is certainly more forward oriented for better climbing positioning. So I ended up pedaling the bike for a month or so on and off, but I still really couldn't get over that feeling even after swapping two wider bars. So I told Pivot I wanted to test the large and I know this was a big ask, but I'm thrilled I did because I instantly felt better, uh, especially after I put wider bars on and swapped the 60 millimeter stock stem for a 50. I just felt much more in the middle of the bike and perhaps the medium World Cup version with that 450 millimeter reach would have worked for me, but I really wanted to test the less racy version. Uh, so I went with this large trail version. All right, so one of the defining features of the Mach 4 SL is how it maintains that quick responsive feel through challenging climbs uh, and made quick power moves essentially more efficient, increasing my confidence on this bike. Climbing technical rock features with step ups or rough rock obstacles is certainly more doable thanks to the lightweight nature of the Mach 4 SL, 
the DW link and the position the geometry puts me in. The bike tracks so well, giving me all of the confidence in the world to power up a move and pedal knowing that that rear tire will continue to grip and move me forward. This also translates really well on descents, easily bunny hopping a large rock and basically staying nimble along the trail. However, one thing that I did notice was despite the bike usually kind of sitting higher in the rear travel, from time to time, if I was between two technical sections with pretty low speed, I found it would kind of get stuck in the travel, lower in the travel, and I would hit my crank arm. And this certainly is probably more pronounced with that 45 millimeter bottom bracket drop and these 175 millimeter crank arms. So when in doubt, Speed is definitely your best friend on the Mach 4 SL. So while power moves are one thing, just as important and something that ups the fun factors, having a bike that can confidently handle high speeds up or down. While the Mach 4 SL is certainly no Hey Duke LVS, it does offer enough length to certainly keep my speed up while maintaining adequate control through corners and chunder. It's not a hammer like a bigger trail bike, but when I went from that medium to the large, I got a much better fit uh, for my kind of riding style. But it comes with a 1,189 millimeter wheelbase, a 30 millimeter increase over the medium, allowing for that much more stability. So while I could tell the difference from the large climbing slightly slower than the medium, it's a fast bike either way. And it was a sacrifice that I was glad to take for a more enjoyable trail riding experience. And it just made bike packing more fun as well. Speaking of bike packing, so I took this bike on a 250 mile ride in Southern Arizona this past January, uh, where we pedaled a good stretch of the Arizona trail and some rugged gravel roads over five long days. All right, so just a little background here. I've done the Arizona and Colorado trail races quite a bit in my late 20s to early 30s. And after pedaling both routes on both hardtails and full suspension bikes, I discovered full suspension bikes on rugged trails like that are more comfortable and simply more fun. But they certainly come at a cost, not only financially, but also in the storage capacity. And that's the case here with the Mach 4 SL, as the bike's top tube slopes so much that it certainly takes away a lot of frame bag or potential frame bag space, but it also offers more standover, which is an excellent way for folks to fit bikes better. The bike comes with various mounts that I did utilize, especially on this trip, uh, such as down tube mounts where I put my repair kit. I got Rogue Panda to also make a really beautiful custom frame bag, and they ended up using the uh, mounts within the frame, both on the down tube and uh, these three pack mounts on the top tube here. So on this trip, I also added the Old Man Mountain Elkhorn rack to the rear end, and I noticed a whole lot of side to side rear end flex when adding weight to that rack. The rear end of this bike is certainly very flexy on purpose, but that side to side movement I'd prefer not to see. But overall, riding this bike loaded, uh, yeah, it's so darn fun. It tracked better, it felt super grounded. I was continuously amazed at what it could do on technical climbs with super fatigued legs. Uh, it's a bike that is made to go fast. And if you're into racing or riding with urgency, especially while loaded, the Mach 4 SL can easily give you that feeling. Plus the added comfort with a full suspension bike is definitely welcome. All right, so Pivot ended up sending me the Team XTR build and the large comes in at 25 pounds, three ounces or 11.4 kilograms with pedals, GPS mount and a bit of dirt. While it's super light, the overall build left something to be desired. First off, the 780 millimeter bars, I was shocked at how twitchy the front end felt with those. So I ended up throwing a 20 millimeter riser bar in the 800 millimeter width, and instantly it made that front end feel a lot more stable. The XTR two piston brakes are another weight savings component, but they come with very poor stopping power, especially while loaded. If it were me, I would definitely throw on some four piston brakes up front with a 180 millimeter rotor. And looking at the rear end here, checking out this seat stay, it kind of bends around the caliper. It's pretty amazing looking. I also don't understand the infatuation with long crank arms. Pivot specs this bike with 175 millimeter crank arms. And I know a lot of other brands are doing the same, uh, but certainly a 170, 165 would be better for me. All right, so I really liked the convenience of the twist lock, lockout feature, this RockShox, product that locks out the rear Fox float shock. Uh, it just is really convenient to just 
click it on, click it off. One thing it does do is kind of add just another cable housing up front. Uh, and it's super busy up front already, but yeah, that's just something you gotta get over. The Industry 9 Hydra Hubs with Reynolds Carbon Hoops offered quick engagement and a stiff responsive ride and stayed true after getting knocked around pretty good with a loaded bike. I also really like how this build came with the recon tire up front and I ended up throwing another on the rear 2.4 to replace that recon race, which did give me a little bit more stopping power and cornering confidence. For reference here, the bike does come with a Fox Stepcast 34, which has a tire clearance of 2.4 inches and the frame also has a tire clearance of 2.4 inches. Overall, there are various builds that you can buy from Pivot. Their ride builds start at around 5300 USD and their top end team edition with SRAM flight attendant is over $13,000. So while I doubt the Pivot Mach 4 SL was designed to be a bike packing rig, it's certainly a bike that can manage long days quickly over rugged terrain. And when loaded, it feels even more grounded and able. If I were still racing local XC races and tackling events like the Arizona or Colorado Trail Races or Highland Trail 550, the Pivot Mach 4 SL would be near the top of my list. Still, while Pivot certainly is trying to open the doors to more than World Cup Pro racers with this latest edition, it's also clear that another door needs to be opened Open, uh, one that has a pretty big budget with the cheapest build coming in at 5,300 USD. It does come in five sizes from extra small to extra large. So what are your thoughts on the newest Pivot Mach 4 SL? And would you ever consider a full suspension bike for bikepacking? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, thank you all so much for watching. And if you like what you saw in this video and want to see more like it, please hit that subscribe button and notification bell. And if you want to help support us a little bit more, help support bikepacking.com as a whole, you can do so by signing up for the Bikepacking Collective. The collective offers a lot of awesome perks, including industry discounts, monthly giveaways, and the twice yearly Bikepacking Journal. So to learn a little bit more about the Bikepacking Collective, you can click on the card in the top right corner, or you can also follow the link in the description description below. As always, thank you all so much for watching and until next time, pedal further.